Sigue el tutorial. Let me see you do it. Let me see it. Uh. morning guys it's impossible what what i'm doing right now here every single day and this is from a guy who doesn't believe in the impossible the reason why i say that to you is that this thing is so powerful i've gone to a point in my life where i've had enough i am tired of seeing this thing be my own worst enemy and i know it can we can turn it around and flip it and make it work for us so my one word Determination, that's the th energy, the thing that's within all of us. I want you to find the determination within you. By me opening myself up like this authentically every single day, doing my best to show the power of my mind and the impact in my life, I want you to understand that whatever you're going through, any challenge, anything that gets you emotional, that gets you upset, you can flip it. You can turn that darkness into the greatest light. Have a great day, everybody. If success is contingent on a good plan, excellent education and execution and a driven mindset, what do you think makes businesses fall apart um, when all of these factors have been met. Well, con yeah. some, Sorry, business, some businesses are just tough. I mean, a significant percentage, you know, of the restaurants that, uh, that open up this year are going to fail. I mean, there, there are a lot of, a lot of tough businesses. Uh, 
I've always said, if you want to be regarded as a, a great business person, find a great business. <laughs> and uh, there's a huge difference. I mean, it does make a difference. I, I, this is an analogy. When, turned, I, when I got out of Columbia, one of my best friends was a terrific talent. And uh, he went to work in the steel business, and he did okay, but it was the wrong business to be in. It's very important to get on the right train. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to you want to get on a train that's going to go 90 miles an hour, right. and not one that's going to go 30 miles an hour, and you're going to try to figure out how to you know, push it along a little faster. Right. So it, it really does make a, a huge difference. Uh, and and there are some businesses that are inherently uh, there's far more opportunity in than others. So you want to give a lot of thought to what train you're getting on. And uh, I owned a half interest when I was, I don't know, 21 or 22 in a service station, uh, a Sinclair service station with a pal of mine in the National Guard. It was a lousy business. You know, we had a guy right next to us. He kept selling more gallons of gas than we did. <laughs> he would cut our prices and everything. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't care if, you know, if you're a combination of Steve Jobs and Larry Ellison and everyone else, you're not going to succeed if you got a guy selling gas below cost next right. to you. So, you know, it's important to get on the right train. Some businesses are just easier to build on the scale than others. Some businesses have a high growth market and some of them are slow growth. It doesn't mean that you can't win, but the opportunity is going to be much different. The upside is going to be much different depending on the market that you're going into. I love to say that a successful entrepreneur is one who combines what you love doing with where there's an opportunity. If you love doing it, but there's no opportunity or it's really small, then you've got a hobby. It can be a really fulfilling hobby, but it's when you love doing it and there's a big opportunity, that's when you start to win. Now, if there's a big opportunity, you don't love doing it, you're not going to win either. You can build an okay business if there's a big opportunity, but you don't like doing it, but only for so long, because then you're going to quit. You're going to hate your life because you're waking up every day and doing work that you don't like doing, and you're going to quit. And this is where a lot of entrepreneurs struggle. They do one of those two things. They try to start a business just around their hobby, their, what they're passionate about, but there's no market opportunity. They don't know how to tie it into real demand, so they never build a business, just a hobby on the weekends and evenings. Or... They're just chasing the hot opportunity and they don't business. So either way, you're gonna lose in both those scenarios. You win by doing love that has a big opportunity upside to you as well. I wanna share two quick examples uh, that happened to me past week that I think could be really relevant and valuable. One that asked me, what social media platforms am I focusing on? And we're talking about Instagram because he, he wanted to go more hardcore on Instagram, wanted to know what I was doing on Instagram. And I said, you know what? Right now, I'm not doing much on Instagram. You know, I'm, I'm not spending a lot of my effort, my time, my energy on Instagram. I love serving. I love helping. I love getting the message out there. I want to do it in a way that has the biggest potential for impact and reach in the projects I'm working on. So he said, well, where are you spending your effort and energy? Well, YouTube is still number one. YouTube is number one because YouTube is still the best place to get your message across. It has been for the past couple of years and it's only getting bigger. More people are going to YouTube for content, for education. It's only getting bigger. So YouTube is still number one. But then after YouTube, where am I spending most of my time? Twitter and Discord. Discord, I think, is the best place to be for community. And Twitter, it's surprising how, how much Twitter has picked up. Twitter was one of the first social networks I was on. And I, I not left it, but kind of ignored it for years. And now it's back. It's back, baby. <laughs> so I'm spending a lot of my time on Twitter and Discord and, of course, YouTube. And why? Well, because that's where people are. That's where the impact is. That's where you can get your message out. And so I don't, I don't care about the platform. I care about reaching people. So you could spend all day long working on, on Instagram or you could have spent all day long still if you were working on MySpace creating your account. Does MySpace still exist? I don't even know. It's just not a big opportunity. And so, yeah, again, what do I care about? I care about helping entrepreneurs. I care about getting a message out there. So then it becomes using your head. Okay, where's the opportunity? YouTube, Discord, Twitter. P.S. If you want to join my Discord server, it's free. I'm there every day. EvanCarmichael.biz. Come check us out. The second quick example is I'm talking to a successful entrepreneur who wants to move from his big business that he's built tens of millions of dollars in revenue to starting a business to help other entrepreneurs get their companies going and he's having a hard time getting this thing off the ground and he's having a hard time monetizing it 
and he's having a hard time getting people to pay him for things. And I said, well, the immediate opportunity, you know, if you have a long horizon, great. You'll, you'll eventually win because your brain will play out. You'll get better at the, at the game, et cetera. But the best thing that you can do right now, if you want to monetize it, is coach people who are inside of your industry that you have domain expertise. Because what he's coming at doing is just helping people with personal development. He's coming in, helping them believe in themselves, helping them overcome their living beliefs, you know, uh, helping them fix their mindset, get their schedule right, all that stuff. But then if they're off building their own business, he's only adding one little piece. Now imagine if you could add the tactical information and the contacts as well as the mindset and the motivation. So there's two entrepreneurs, three entrepreneurs that I invested into um, recently, Drew, Jeremy, and Bo. And these three guys, some of them had no experience. I think a Jeremy had, he was a stock boy at a grocery store. And you know, he's mid six figures revenue 18 months later. Why? Well, because yes, I'm giving him the belief and the mindset and the motivation, but I can also give him contacts. I can also make introductions for him. I can also give him information about the industry to know what he's doing right and what he's doing wrong. And so when I'm looking to make an investment into an entrepreneur, I want to be able to help them beyond just believe because I can give belief to anybody. But who would I want to give belief to that had the highest impact for success? It's going to be people who I can give contacts to. Jeremy does YouTube consulting. There's people who contact me all the time for YouTube consulting. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be in that business. So I can give it to Jeremy. Perfect. But if you were a, you know, I don't know, you were an arborist. Can you see the trees? I guess not. It's kind of blurry. Um, if you're an arborist, I can help you believe in yourself. I can give you some business model ideas, but I can't make contacts or introductions for you. And so you have to be smart about the opportunities you take on. It has to be something that you deeply, deeply, deeply care about. And then inside that, find the opportunity because the market is moving and the market hopefully is getting bigger. And if you're inside a growing market and you love what you're doing, that's a slam dunk. That's a home run for you. So what's the methodology now to help figure that out? Well, one, you have to start with what do you naturally just love doing? What do you love doing? What can you wake up and get, what do you, what are you getting lost in? Where are you spending your time? What are you daydreaming about? Don't, not about the result, not about the cars and the yachts and the whatever, right? Not that, that that's a result. The, what do you get lost in the process of doing? What industry do you actually care about? Where are you spending your time? Where are you researching? What doesn't feel like work for you, right? So that's step one is, is connecting to something that you're actually passionate about, not just trying to make money, right? Making money is important, but it's not step number one figure out that idea. Next is, okay, how do we turn that into a market opportunity? Where is the business actually growing that we can connect our, our talents and our passions to? So if you love if you love sharing a message, like my first example, great. Now be strategic about the platform that you're gonna pick. It used to be Instagram, now it's Twitter and Discord. If you love coaching people and consulting and investing in people. Great. Connected to where you should have domain expertise and can conduct people and take a piece of their business as opposed to just charging for the hour uh, or just helping people with mindset and not actually introductions and tactics, right? So you love the opportunity. It makes you come alive thinking about it. And there's actually something for you to grow. Right? Logically, strategically, there's a way for you to make money doing it. When you can combine those two things, you have a much, 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 much higher degree of success. So it's 1030 on a Wednesday, and apparently I've sold close to $3,000 in sales on Amazon already. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three 
favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. No. Feel the power of you controlling your breathing. In through your nose and out through your mouth. You've got your legs crossed, your back straight, your eyes closed. 
You remember the truth. You know the truth. That you were born to win, to take control of your life, the way you take control of your breathing. One breath at a time. One thought at a time. So let's do that right now. Let's see ourselves doing the best we can as we begin our day today in the best way possible. Winning the morning, winning our mind, and growing our minds and our bodies. And whatever we do. So right now, let's see ourselves doing the best walk we've ever done when that music shuts off. Right here, right where we are, right where we sit. Because we know the truth. After all, we're made of truth. We're made of the same stuff the universe is made of. That's what makes you infinitely intelligent. See yourself right now doing the best walk you've ever done when that music shuts off. that music goes off, you're going to win. You're going to make it real. You're going to make your dream, your vision real. Good morning, Determination. So good to be here together again today. A new day. A new chance to be better than we were the last time. Here we go, everyone. When I say go, we're going to start jogging. So right now, as you're doing your best walk, whether it's side to side or whether you're simply walking on the spot, I want you to see yourself doing your best jog on the spot when I say go. I miss you so much, Beverly Glenn. I miss you so much, Determination. But we get to unite right now with this energy. We get to remember... We get to be our true great self, to grow our minds and to grow our bodies, wherever we are, whatever we're doing. And the way we do this is the way we'll do everything. So here we go. Okay, go. Most on your breathing. Keep going a little bit more. And stop. Okay, walking. Back to our best walk. Stay focused on your breathing. Remember, the way you catch your breathing, the way you control your breathing, is the same way you can control your thoughts and your feelings. Let's start with some shoulder rolls forward. Let's do 10 forward. And backwards. Okay, let's do some arm circles forward. Feel the power of you controlling your mind and your body. 
Feel the joy of being able to move your body through space the best way you can. And backwards. Okay, hands on your hips, bend your knees, and side stretch. Okay, let's twist our bodies, twist, hands on the hips, alright, and let's do five push-ups, everyone, five push-ups. Alright, let's do five sit-ups together, here we go, the best you can. Okay, and let's do five squats. Here we go. All right, and let's do lunges. Three on each side, arms up. Alternating legs. All right, good. And let's do 10 second plank. Bellies, knees off the ground. And stand up again, everyone. And let's reach for the ceiling on our toes. Hold it there for 10. Okay, and reach for your toes, straight knees. Remember to focus and control that breathing. Just reach. It's okay if you don't touch your toes. Reaching is what matters. All right, and stand up. And let's uh, balance. Grab one leg and focus on planting that foot firmly into the ground. Bend the one knee if you have to. Find your balance point and then pull that heel back towards your bottom. Excellent. All right, and switch the other one. Find that balance and hold. All right, good. Okay, and now let's hug the one knee. Here we go. Bring that knee up. And again, find that balance. And hold it there. 10 seconds. All right, and switch to the other one. Slowly bring it up. Good job. Excellent. Okay. And let's sit down. And let's stretch out and reach for our toes. Straight knees. Here we go. Again, reaching is what matters. It's okay if you don't touch your toes. Just give your best. Feel the joy. Feel the process of you working to become better at every movement you make. Every stretch you do. Okay, here we go. Let's do V-shape now with the legs. So V-shape and reach for the floor as far as away from your body as you can. And reach for one side. Hold it there. And switch to the other side. Let's bring our feet together now and gently push your knees down with your elbows and hold it there for 10. Here we go. Again, feel that power of you 
in the now, in the moment. Winning. W-I-N, I've heard before, stands for what's important now. What's important now is doing our best in whatever we do. Okay, let's go one leg forward and one leg back. Keep the knee on the ground and go as far back as you can without hurting yourself. Keep that knee down though. Here we go. And switch the other one now. And keep that knee down. Go as far back as you can. Okay, good. All right. And let's roll onto our belly. And let's push the floor and look up at the ceiling. Cobra stretch. Here we go. Hold it for 10. Excellent. Okay, legs crossed again. Back straight. Eyes closed. Breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Now I want you to see yourself right now. When that music goes on, I want you to see yourself doing the best you can on an exercise of your choice. For me today, I'm going to be working on challenging myself to do as many push-ups and air squats as I can. I'm going to see that in my mind right now. I'm going to try to be a little bit better than I was last time. What about you? Think about it. What is there that you want to get better at? What exercise do you want to do? Remember, it's got to be within the rules, safety rules. Safe rules that are there to safe. So this is the right here. So what exercise will you do to the best of your ability when that music goes on? I want you to see that clearly in your mind right now. You might want to do jumping jacks. You might want to do burpees. You might want to simply dance, move your body to the music. If you want to play your own music, you can do that as well. I've got my music here. You feel free to enjoy that. And I want you to see yourself when that music goes on, doing the best you can, whatever exercise you choose. Because you know the truth. The way you do that is the same way you will improve and do better at anything. Determination, let's go. Let's feel that energy moving up. Here we go. Music always changes our energy state. Whatever you do, you gotta believe that you can do better. Here I go. As many push ups as I can do. All right, we got 53 today. I gotta remember that for next time. What is it for you? What are you doing right now? Maybe you're doing some jumping jacks. 
Maybe you're dancing to the music. Whatever it is you're doing, do it to the best of your ability. You were born to be your best all the time. Remember your breathing. Always believe that you can be better than you were the last time. Even if you don't get exactly where you want to be, the process, the struggle, fighting to be better than you were last time, that's what's going to bring you your joy and your happiness. We have our determination. We get to work on that all the time. All right, air squats are next for me. What about you? See how many I can do here before I get tired, too tired to keep going, but there's always a little bit more. That's determination. All right, here we go. You can feel free to do the same thing or again, do your own thing. You got your own dance, your music, whatever you want to do, whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability. Here we go. How's everybody feeling? We got the blood flowing. We've given our best at something. Feeling the power of us controlling our breathing again. There's no greater joy than that. For me, no greater joy than the awareness of my our determination. So sometimes I try to do these exercises and I try to do as many reps as I can in a minute. That's one way to do it. You can change up your, your intensity, the amount of reps you do, the time you have, that's up to you. But whatever you choose, always try to get a little bit better than you were last time.
And once again, legs crossed, back straight, eyes closed, focused on our breathing, back to our breathing. That powerful force keeping us alive, keeping our energy flowing. And we don't really think about it. We never really attempt to control our breathing, most of us anyway. But we were born to do that too. To remember that in any moment, we can take charge of it, the way we take charge of our breathing. Same way we take charge of our mind, our thoughts. So reflect back on today. How did you do? Are you satisfied with your work ethic? Are you satisfied with your determination? Did you use it in its fullness, its beauty? Our determination is invisible. We cannot put our finger on it. We cannot see it. But it is there. We have the power to determine what we will think and what we will do. Today, We've won the morning, we've won our minds, and therefore we can win our day and our life. One breath at a time, one thought at a time. Have a great day everybody, have a great life as always, I miss you, I love you guys so much, keep going, keep using your determination, love you guys. Morning guys, in our top 10 rules for success today, Jack Ma shares with us his rule number five, which is get inspired. This is so important for me every single day. I wake up in the morning and my mission is get inspired, set my mind so that I can help as many people as possible, including myself. Now, Jack Ma gives us the example of how he would watch movies. He would um, see different scenes in movies and they would inspire him inspire him. So he was inspired by uh, Whitney Houston in the movie The Bodyguard and uh, the speech that she made or the way she sorry, the way she sang. So he was inspired by how she put her heart into it. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I want you to do. Whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that you want in your life, you got to get inspired. I'm so passionate about this because it worked for me. It has saved me. It is transforming this into the most positive thing it can be for everyone. So I hope you get inspired every day. Have a great day, everybody. I hold property forever, I collect rent forever, and I pay no taxes. So if you like paying taxes, then you know don't invest in real estate. Best time to prepare for a crash is before the crash. Only idiots buy at the top of a market. And today the world is full of idiots. The profits are made when you buy, not when you sell. So if you're worried about your position, you probably bought too high. Who wants to live below their means? I want to live the best life I can possibly live. So I talk about this often. I use liability. I, if I want to buy a new Ferrari, I first buy an asset and the asset pays for the Ferrari. I, I wanted a Rolls Royce. Why? Because I never had a Rolls Royce. I've had Bentleys. So I built an asset and the asset then bought my Rolls Royce. Now I'm kind of bored with cars. So I don't have a guilty thing is that I have financial education, which is what the Rich Dad Company teaches. 
And you can have the same thing too. You just have to stop listening to those school teachers who are poor. You know, most school, school teachers, like my poor dad, very good, good people, but they're so terrified of making mistakes. They want, they want a steady paycheck and they want a guaranteed pension. I don't think you can get rich from that point of view. Look at this chart here, it's called the cash flow quadrant. E and S, employee and self-employed. That was my poor dad. You know, they, these guys work for money. These guys are not capitalists. They work for money and they invest their own money. On the B and the I side is my rich dad side. That's the capitalist side. Capitalists use other people's labor and other people's money to get rich. Which side do you want to be on? I'd rather be on the capitalist side. So that's the only difference. It's a whole shift of mindset and education, but everybody can do it if you want to do it. Need motivation? Watch Top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Robert Kiyosaki, and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Are you a leading authority looking to book high fee speaking gigs? Hi, my name is Kevin T. Robertson, and I've done. Rule number two, study real estate. Real estate is a very important asset class. So a lot of people think, well, I have stocks, I have bonds, I have mutual funds, but they're just assets. And But real estate is, to me, the single most important asset class to study, especially today, since I just was watching CNBC, you know, Bubble Vision, and they finally acknowledge that Zillow has a 7,000 property problem because they flip property. And naturally, I tax, and I don't flip property. I, I hold property forever. I collect rent forever, and I pay no taxes. So if you like paying taxes, then you know don't invest in real estate. If you like paying taxes, have a 401k, biggest ripoff I've ever seen. But So that's why real estate as an asset class in the macro picture globally is the single most important subject, but also the most complex. And the reason it's complex is... You, if you buy, let's say, Apple stock, and you make a mistake, you say you buy Apple at ten, where's it, what's it, Tesla at a thousand bucks or something. You buy Tesla at a thousand bucks, and it starts to crash. You can get out tonight. You can yes. get out immediately. But you buy a piece of real estate, you can't get out. So in financial literacy, which most school teachers have no idea what that means, the word is called liquidity, and the reason real estate needs to be studied more than any other subject other than entrepreneurship, is liquidity. You start a business, you can't get out if you make a mistake. Yeah. You buy a piece of real estate, you can't get out. Rule number three, buy when prices are low. What should you do? Are you saying get out of equities, get out of your positions, stay in cash and keep that cash on the sideline to take advantage of the crash? What are you saying that uh, an investor who's watching Kitco, who's watching these other channels, who's watching your channel, should potentially do in order to best protect their portfolio? Well, that's a great question because the only reason you'd be worried, it really goes back to what was it, what did you buy? Yeah. Remember, your profit is made when you buy, not when you sell. So I remember in 2000, gold went down to like 300 or something like this. I thought I died and went to heaven. I just backed up the truck. So when Bitcoin went to, let's say, 20,000, I was going, well, that's kind of interesting. So when it backed down to three, then uh, rebounded to six, I picked it up at six, I'm, and it's 41 today. <clears throat> so your profits are made when you buy, not when you sell. So if you're worried about your position, you probably bought too high. Rule number four, go against the norm. I said this whole thing is should you be an entrepreneur? Well, a lot has to do with what your family said about it. Mm. You know, my point out also the rich were crooks. Entrepreneurs were crooks. The rich were greedy. School, all you had to do was have a college degree, you were set. Different cultures. Yeah. And I had to go against all this, especially respecting the father. 
Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five, get out of the rat race. You've long advocated for investing in real estate as a source of income, one of the biggest premises of Rich Dad Poor Dad. Do you still suggest investing in real estate in the real estate market now? <laughs> Absolutely. You want to invest in things that last. That's Jim Records. Invest in what lasts. But this is the key. Let me explain something. Behind me is my cash flow board game. There's two tracks on the board game. There's a rat race, which is a 401k guy. And then there's a fast track. That's a capitalist track. In other words, this is it here. Okay, so this is my little, this is book two of the Rich Dad series, ESBI. So our schools teach us to be employees and self-employed like doctors, lawyers, and stuff like this. Capitalists teach people to be business owners or brand owners and investors. But the only way you get out of the rat race <clears throat> is via a thing called a financial statement. So if you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and if you read Cash Flow Quadrant and you play the cash flow game, you have to have a financial statement. Your financial statement is what your banker wants to see. So when I go talk, I just borrowed $31 million a couple of weeks ago for a piece of property in Austin, Texas. If I didn't have a strong financial statement, I couldn't borrow $31 million. And so what's happening today is the poor middle class who, are, who went to school, they got their jobs and all this stuff, they're being wiped out while the rich are getting richer because everything the Fed prints stays in the asset class, not the business class. Rule number six, be truthful. So it's 1030 on a Wednesday and apparently I've sold close to $3,000 in sales on Amazon already. Finally, one day I, re I, I had this transformational event. I did a thing called AST, EST, Earhart Seminars Training. Everybody did it, you know, and all this. And I sat in this room and I realized I was a liar. And I realized that's why I'd never be successful because I could lie, cheat and steal. And I was very good at it. And so I called up Captain Abrams and I, I was living in Hawaii in Waikiki. I was making a lot of money in real estate. And I called Captain Abrams and I said, Captain, I'm coming in. He said, what do you mean you're coming in? I said, I'm gonna come in. I will tell you what I know. He couldn't believe it. You know, I just realized if I didn't confess my sins as a Catholic would say, I'd go to hell. You know, hell is not in hell. Hell is I live with my lying, cheating, stealing, every day of my life. So I took the stand and he deposed me. I told him the truth. The whole just did this. At the end of about three and a half hours, I think I lost 20 pounds. So uh, I was going to jail. And it's one of the most profound, transformational, you know, metamorphosis, you go from an immature form to an adult form. I grew up. I said, holy miracle, the truth will set you free. I understand that at a level that the average person will never know because I had been such a scumbag, dishonest, disciplinary problem. And then, you know, like with my wife, I never cheated on her. Most of my friends cheat on their wives, 70% do. But when I said I'd get married this time, I would not cheat on her. Marriage is still hard, but um, cheating makes it worse, if you know what I mean. So it's a matter of not trying to change the world out there you know, the crisis is between this year and this year and in your heart. And that's yeah, I mean, being a military leader or wartime leader is important because it takes about, it's about courage at this time. It's about being truthful, being forthright, being upright, being a stand-up guy.
That's the difference today. And it's not about what the crooks are doing, it's what you're doing. Rule number seven, learn from your job. It was really hard because I, I didn't like, I'm, a, I'm actually a very shy person. Mm -hmm. So learning how to sell was the hardest thing I could do. But if I hadn't spent four years learning how to sell, I never made it here, I never made it here. Mm -hmm. So the entire time that you were here, you were preparing to jump to the other quadrant. Correct. Mm -hmm. So every job is not so much for the high paying job with job security. Yeah. For not, not everybody, you know, most people should have job security because mm -hmm. they're not designed to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, then you better take this job and say, well, which way am I gonna go? Yeah. Okay. So I knew my job at Xerox was to go here and here and here, yeah. not stay here. Mm -hmm. And I actually make so much money over here that I don't need job security, I yeah. need the money. <laughs> so re really that's the lesson. When you look at a job, you look at what can I learn mm -hmm. more than how much can I make. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest challenge. And if you, you look for a job where you can learn a lot, the harder the job, mm -hmm. the better it is. Rule number eight, use debt. And it's especially with real estate, real estate. So let me say this much. In macro, there's four different asset classes. Number one is a business. So I set out to build a business which is a brand. Like Warren Buffett only invests in brands like Coca-Cola. So Rich Dad became a brand. But to keep my money, I had to have real estate. So let's say I make a million dollars at Rich Dad. I go into real estate, I borrow $4 million. And then guys like Dave Ramsey are saying, get out of debt. I said, well, it's good for you, Dave, but it doesn't work for me because I hate paying taxes and I like making money. So then the third asset class, which is stocks, bonds, paper, mutual funds, savings. I, I don't touch that stuff. And number five are gold, silver, Bitcoin. And because that's where I store my value. So when I need money, I use debt. And the reason um, bigger pockets, you know, Brandon Turner and David Green are here is because when you, you use debt, that is fricking dangerous. You know, I was just I was just in Dallas two days ago, three days ago, with my partner in real estate, Kenny McElroy, who's part of the smartest guy I know. I love him. He's the best, man. He's he is one he smart is the best. dude. And he stood up there on stage with me. I said, Kenny, how much money have you borrowed this half a year so far? Three hundred million dollars. Yeah. He sucked the air out of the room. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I said, well, well, why did you borrow $300 million? So the number one, we like to make money and we don't want to pay taxes. To me, that's smart. Rule number nine, be smart. I'm so getting traction for any new online business is difficult. With the amount of competition today, getting things going online is nearly impossible. I'm still saying buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Now, but will gold and silver and Bitcoin go up and down? Of course. But that's why you want to buy the stuff early. So I'm in my my entry price for Bitcoin is nine thousand. You know, when it went, when it goes to let's say twenty thousand, I'm still in the money. So right now I'm very impressed with Bitcoin. I like I like the blockchain idea. I'm learning more. I'm an old guy, but I'm learning. But I do think it's the money of the future. At least blockchain is going to help that out. All these other cryptos coming out, I don't know about it. I just think my friends who are in the know tell me that Bitcoin is still the old dog, the best one to buy. So, But I, I'm not saying buy Bitcoin. I'm just saying I'm buying Bitcoin. It's a big difference. And I'm still buying gold and silver, but I started buying gold at 50 bucks and silver at $1. So I'm in the money. So the best time to prepare for a crash is before the crash. So think about this. If I'm right, I'm not saying I'm right. Let's say they blow, build, they blow this huge bubble. You know, Biden keeps handing out more stimmy checks and whatever these cartoons are doing. I mean, these guys are criminals. I mean, how can, you know, I'm not political, but Trump was building a wall in the southern border and Biden opens the gates. I'm going, this country could not be more screwed up. I, mean, I can't believe it. You know, I can't believe it. So ladies and gentlemen, it's better to be smarter than be euphoric right now. That's what I'm saying. So I get really rich when markets crash. So I'm watching Bitcoin, this is July, 2021. When Bitcoin gets around 27 to 24,000, I get interested again. So that's like having Neiman Marcus go on sale. 
So let's say I like these pair of Prada shoes. So I, I love Prada shoes. Why? Because I have fat feet. They fit. <laughs> They're comfortable. <laughs> They really are comfortable. <laughs> But anyway, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, so let's say Prada shoes at $500. Neiman raises the price. Oh, today it's $700. Would people rush in and buy Prada shoes at $700 when they're only $500? But that's what these idiots are doing today. They're buying stocks at all-time highs, buying real estate at all-time highs. I'm going, everybody's happy. Why do people get happy when you're buying assets at tops of markets? So if, if I'm not saying, if Neiman Marcus says, well, those Prada shoes that were $700 are now on sale at a dollar, guess what? I'm not going to say, oh, that's terrible. The shoe price crashed. No, I'm going to get really excited. I'm going to stock up on Prada shoes or whatever there is, you know? So ladies and gentlemen, only idiots buy at the top of a market. And today the world is full of idiots, full of idiots. Everybody's happy. So let me say it again. This is an old, old saying in, in my world of investing. How did you go broke? Well, two ways, slowly at first, then suddenly. And I think that's my warning to you today. I'd be prepared <coughs> for the crash. When Bitcoin gets down to 24, I'm going to come, come alive again. I'm going to get a little bit more excited. If gold goes down to, let's say, a thousand, I'm going to back up the truck. If silver goes to, let's say, 15, I'm going to back up the truck. So right now, I've, I'm in a cash position. I'm just waiting for the crash. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips, is buy silver. In my opinion, all the smart guys are saying, silver is your best investment. Silver is 50% off its all-time high. I love silver. I mean, I just bought some more. I mean, I, I don't mind. I didn't. I buy silver mines. But I also buy silver coins. So let me just say my simple philosophy as a capitalist is gold is for saving, silver is for spending. So if the S has the flat fan, as you know, I'm going to be spending my silver. Are you a leading authority looking to book high fee speaking gigs? Hi, my name is Kevin T. Robertson, and I've done. What makes something an asset and a liability is the two, are the two most important words in business, cash flow. Which way is the cash flowing? So an asset, if the money is flowing into your income statement, it's an asset. So my rich dad would say, if money is flowing into your pocket, it's an asset. If money is flowing out of your pocket, it's a liability. So the average person, they go out and they buy a house, they say, oh, it's an asset but every month it's flowing straight to the bank. So your money flows straight to the bank. Not that intelligent. You know, I want the money to flow from the bank to me. So it flows to the bank. Or what they'll do is they'll buy a stock or a bond or a mutual fund, and it's an asset and it flies sh straight to Wall Street. Not your assets, Wall Street's asset. And the third line, when you look under expense, first line is tax. So the average employee, like my poor dad, with a high paying job, the money comes in, goes straight out the taxes and to the government. Make sense? So when you, when you get a job, first line, taxes, second, mortgage to the bank, Third, your 401k or your IRA, straight to Wall Street. <laughs> but you think they're assets. It's not their assets, but they're not your asset. So that's one of the big things my rich dad taught me is you got to control your cash flow. You want the money flowing into your pocket, not out of your pocket. So the one last thing I'll show you here is this. Is this is the asset column. This is what rich dad worked for. He worked for assets. He didn't want a job. And this is my poor dad here. He wanted a high paying job. Different mindsets. So today, you know, <clears throat> I, don't, I, I still go home to Hawaii. 
I see my relatives, and they keep they call me Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Have you got a job yet? And I go, No, Auntie, I don't have a job. She goes, Oh, too bad, you're unemployed. I said, Yep. So their mindset is they've been programmed to be employees to work for the rich, and that's what my rich dad taught me. So it's all here in the financial statement. The rich work for assets. The poor and middle class work for money. Very different mindset. So I don't want a job. I just want the asset that produces income, called cash flow, not taxable. Not taxable. That's why the rich are getting rich. The team is the hardest part of the game. You know, like that's like okay, I'm going to take on the Cleveland Cavaliers next year. Who am I going to who am I going to put on my team? Well. My brother-in-law, who's fat and ugly, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I should have a team. Well, you better choose your team really carefully. Or you know, you know, my son needs a job. He's a drug dealer, but he played basketball in high school, and that's what entrepreneurs do. They don't choose their team with any kind of precision. Now, I made that mistake. You know, I brought on like friends who thought they were entrepreneurs, and they're incompetent. You know, they were terrible. And I was I was terrible. Also, the difference is is when we failed in the first business, I went on. They went back to their jobs. It's a very big difference in mindset. So all I'm saying here is this: if you're going to understand this, study entrepreneurs. Like I studied Edison, you know. I studied um, Gates, Jobs. My biggest hero of all is Jobs, Steve Jobs. I studied Walt Disney, Henry Ford. Uh, Tesla, you know this guy Elon Musk is Tesla car. Elon Musk is the new Steve Jobs. I mean, this guy is out of sight. Smart, he knows the game very well. Well, I always say the number one skill of an entrepreneur is the ability to sell or communicate. Number one, because sales equals income. So if your sales are down, your income's down. But it's not just selling your customer. You got to sell your employees. That's really tough, you know. And then next is selling my investors. So I'm selling investors. I'm selling、uh, employees. I'm selling customers, and I'm selling myself. You know, I got to talk myself into. I, I don't have the day. I don't have the pleasure of being down. Entrepreneurs have got to be up, because if you're down, your employees know it, your customers know it, the market knows it. So number one is sales. But when you look at the big picture, there's three things an entrepreneur must learn. Number one is PR, and what you're talking about is PR. The other, the other day, Fox News interviewed me to find out if I, I would endorse my friend Donald Trump for president. You know how much that's worth. You know they they co-branded us, Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, and Trump. Yeah, that that's incredibly priceless. You know, so getting PR is a number one skill. Under that is marketing, and what marketing does is like advertising. They want to set the customer up to get ready to buy. Oh yeah, oh yeah! I saw that Kia ad. I, I want to buy a Kia. I want to buy some land. You know, I want to buy this. So the customer is now primed to buy. That's marketing's job. Then the last thing is a sale. So if you've done a really good job on PR, then you've done a great job on marketing. The sale is like that. You know, they walk in, they buy. But if you have no PR and you have no marketing, you have to pound, 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 hard close on. Well, Mr. Customer, you know, you know today's changing business environment. You know, you should buy my insurance. You know, and people today hate sales pitches more than ever before. So the number one sales job of a true entrepreneur is develop your ability to get PR. Now, Things you should never mix with water. Mascara. Home electronics. I'll say it again. Most entrepreneurs are not good at sales. They're horrible at marketing. They have no idea what it is, and they can't get any PR, and so they struggle. And again, sales equals income, so they crash. You know, if you want to stay small, be the smartest guy on the block, and that's why most accountants, most attorneys, most doctors never get rich. It's because they're too narrow. You know, they're experts in toenail removal or something. You know what I mean? Or my attorney, the poor guy is an A student, but he knows jack about outside of that. Whereas I never had. I'm a. I flunked out of high school twice because I can't write. 
it's iron if I'm a writer to <laughs> But the reason I'm pretty good is because in the military, we're taught to be generalists, not specialists. So when I sit down with my team, I have accountants, I have attorneys, I have media guys, I have IT guys, I have graphic designers and all this. So I operate as a team since I don't know anything. So in, in actuality, being a great entrepreneur means I could be the laziest guy and I can know the least. But I have to have a very smart team with just a ring finger around me. So because I was never smart, I had respect for people who are smart. And a lot of times I meet A students and they think they're the smartest guys on planet Earth. And that lack of respect is what keeps them small. And that's what most corporate guys want to do. Stay small, you know, you gotta, you gotta climb that corporate ladder, you gotta beat the other guy for that job, and it's all that stuff. It's not the way an entrepreneur really works. It's, it's corporate, it's school system. You know, you gotta beat up for the grades, you gotta have the best grades. I don't have to be the best, but I have to hang out with the best. What's your philosophy when it Good morning guys. I want to share a funny story with you again. Yesterday with my students, every day we try to work on the power of our mind, try to show kids the positive power of their choices. Yesterday I had said something and this made me laugh because this is where we got to watch our words carefully, especially with kids. I, I love kids. They are so innocent. They are going to say it like it is based on what they hear. So yesterday I made a comment about um, you lose when you make a decision that doesn't bring out your best. You lose the best part of yourself. And then one of the kids said, does that mean so-and-so is a loser? And I said, no. I said, everyone's a winner, including you. We just haven't learned how to win in every decision we make. So every decision we make is a choice that shows that we're winners if it's a winning decision. But I had to be so careful because uh, I wasn't calling the kid a loser. They lost in that decision. They got it after, but... It was powerful. Have a great day. Yeah. 
quiere que me la compre. No le gustan las pasiones, ella es práctica. Chica práctica, no quiere flores. Y tarjetitas de colores, ella es práctica. Chica no quiere que me la compre. No le gustan las pasiones, ella es práctica. Chica práctica. Cerro. 